happens if we make sure that discussion is happening during the first quarter. Um, and that actually brings uh, me to how I want to close my remarks. And I want to do that by talking about Michael Vick. Another thing, perhaps, you didn't expect here. So who knows who Michael Vick is? Okay. So Michael Vick, um, amongst many other things, uh, was uh, actually the reason um, Virginia Tech's student body increased both in size and also in quality. While he was playing there, lots of people wanted to come to a fantastic football school. And so we actually started getting more and more students and more and more fantastic admissions. Michael Vick left Virginia Tech um, and was drafted by Atlanta and played there for many years. But perhaps he's most well known for, for being the quarterback who went to jail for dogfighting. For horrible, horrific abuses of dogs. So why am I talking about Michael Vick? I, I'm from Virginia Tech, so that's one of the reasons. But I'm talking about him specifically um, because of a July 2011 interview that he gave on uh, NPR's All Things Considered. And it was a collaborative interview with him and also Wayne Passell, who is the president and CEO of the Humane Society. And so you might know that Michael Vick has become very active um, in supporting anti-dogfighting legislation throughout the United States. And one of the things he said in that interview was that, actually I can quote him, and I thought about things that I've done and if I would have had the proper guidance and used it correctly, if I would have ever have ended up in the situation that I was in. And he talks throughout the interview about never having an opportunity to talk about animal ethics. I taught at Virginia Tech. I know he had a general education requirement to talk about animal ethics. It's part of the general education curriculum there. And so when I heard that interview, I knew that we had failed. We had designed a structure to make sure that someone like Michael Vick would know what he was doing was wrong, would have the space to think through those questions, and he didn't walk away with it. And so I encourage us to think about what are we doing at Cal Poly? How have our efforts worked? But where have they failed that we can be in a situation like this that our students can again say, I didn't know. I had never thought about it. No Cal Poly student should be able to make that statement. That's it. So thank you. Thank you, Jane. So one of the main goals that the cross-cultural centers always have is to create venues on campus for students and you know those are our physical spaces here within the university union but it's also a venue within every event that we host that we hope that all students feel welcomed and comfortable in sharing and um, today i'm going to be showing you our ground rules before we get started um, with the presentation but i also um, or with the open forum i also want to give an opportunity to some of our faculty and staff who i who i know are in the room today who are either um, on different faculty staff associations here on campus who are part of our multicultural center advisory board anyone who feels like they would be a great resource for any of our students in attendance today to come and talk to after this event anytime this quarter, anytime this year, to seek out resources to, to support them through issues like this or other issues they may experience relating to campus climate. So I'm gonna ask those faculty and staff members to stand now. So take a look around. Hopefully you see some faces, maybe professors or staff members that you interact with and know that they would like to be a resource to you and, and maybe one of them could be a mentor or have, have a really good fit with someone to talk to. So I want you to, to remember that. So again, our forum today was prompted by an incident this past weekend, um, but we want it to be a real jumping off point and we hope that all of you feel comfortable sharing. Um, you will note that there are cameras in the room. One of the things we usually like to say at, at our sessions is that you know, things remain uh, confidential and in the space, but um, as you can see from the cameras, they won't today, so please uh, uh, be aware of that when you're, when you're choosing to share. So I'm gonna leave these open forum um, guidelines up on the screen throughout this section, but I just wanna read them aloud first. So the first is to be respectful. 
uh, to give your undivided attention to the person who has the floor. We will be asking that people limit their comments to the two to three minute range. Um, if you have questions, the same thing, to limit those in that range. So as long as that person is speaking, please, please give them that respect to continue speaking. The second is to be open, be as honest as possible, and disclose your own affiliation if you feel comfortable. But please don't name individuals or other organizations. Uh, to be non-judgmental, we can disagree with another person's <coughs> point of view without putting them down. And we want to be careful about making careless remarks towards any populations um, that relate to this incident. And uh, finally, to use I statements, please speak your opinion in the first person and avoid using you. So at this point, I'm going to give people the opportunity to begin um, forming a line, and then we'll get started in about one minute. Um, hello, we are um, members of the American Indian Student Association and we collectively wanted to release a statement on this ongoing issue. So on behalf of the American Indian Student Association, I would like to make a statement about the Greek event that took place the weekend of November 15th. First of all, we would like to thank President Armstrong and the community for the, for the community-wide email that accurately states the severity of this event. The history of colonization and indigenous abuse has been put aside and ignored for far too long. This is an issue not only of race, <coughs> but lack of knowledge and understanding of indigenous peoples. We believe that it needs to be known that this type of activity is extremely offensive and racist. The traumatic history of Native American abuse, which includes but not limited to rape, assault, and cultural genocide, needs to be addressed today here at Cal Poly. In order to form a stronger community, we need to be sensitive and respectful of all cultures and, ra and racial and religious histories. We need to follow the principles of the Mustang Way. The activity last weekend conflicted with these principles and all that Cal Poly stands for. I hope that this statement makes it known that members of American Indian Student Association along with extended Native American communities do not condone this discrimination and this behavior and it establishes an unsafe environment for us on our own campus. Thank you. I'm honestly surprised there's not a bigger line behind me, but oh well. Um, so I work at the Gender Equity Center and I've worked with other various um, organizations on campus and I'm an ethnic studies, hopefully soon to be ethnic studies major. Um, so, but I don't, I don't want to wish to speak on behalf of any of their employees or students. I would like to speak on behalf of myself. So with that being said, this event is not an event that should be taking, on, that should be taking place on camp, Cal Poly's campus or affiliated organizations at all, ever. This is something that is incredibly offensive to any kind of community to, of color and to any kind of underrepresented group in the Cal Poly community. <coughs> so personally, I would like to hear a statement from one of our biggest student leaders, possibly someone who represents Greek life, someone who represents all of our students, to come and speak on why they think that this event is wrong. And furthermore, to add to Dr. Lair's point, I believe that there are a lot of opportunities for students to engage in these dialogues and to have the space to think about critically why these events are wrong and why we need to promote a culture of inclusivity. And I think that a lot of students simply do not want to do that. So if any students out there would like to refute that point, please, I invite you to come up here and do so. Thank you. All right, can you guys hear me? Is that good? It's, it's kind of short for me. Okay, so my name is Alexander Horncliffe. I am the ISC Director of Public Relations. Um, I thought it was only appropriate that after that I come up and, and share a statement with you guys. Um, I, don't, I, I can't officially speak for each and every fraternity that is in IFC, but as, a, but as the Director of Public Relations, I can tell you one thing, that this is not a, a uh, a thing that we stand behind. This is something that we also realize is very wrong. As someone of color myself, I do understand the impact of things like this on the community. I understand that when something comes out of your, like, I understand that when something comes out of someone's mouth or, or an action like comes about, 
it can affect you in ways that you don't even realize, in ways that are around you and things that you can't even see. And this is one of those things. This is a, a party theme, which at first might not seem that significant, but in the light of things and the fact that we have more than 100 people gathered in this auditorium today, it shows you that actions have far-reaching consequences, and we understand that. So as Director of Public Relations, I apologize. I formally apologize. We messed up. That is something that is clear and one thing that has to be understood. This is not something that we stand behind. I'll repeat it and I'll repeat it until it's dead. But this is something that we are very sorry for as a community of Greeks. But we can't go back in time. We can't change those things. So the real focus should be on how do we move, how do we move forward. Um, an apology is obviously not going to go and patch it up. There's not a Band-Aid for this kind of problem. But the thing is, if we, if we dwell on it, if we sit here on it, that's when it gets worse. It's how do we go and, and, and constructively improve? How do we go and change Greek life's perception on these ideas? That's how we move forward. Thank you. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Eduardo Morales, just a quick intro. Uh, proud brother of Lambda Theta Phi, Latin Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, fifth year, graduating in June. Woohoo! Um, finally. Um, but one of the concerns that I have regarding this is how do we move forward as a community to minimize or miti mitigate events like this from happening again? What's to stop us from having this forum and everybody feeling really good about stopping an event like this and then forgetting about it six months from now? Um, and as a, as a student of color, um, I've definitely seen the diversity grow on campus ever since I was a freshman. Um, and I'm really happy about that, but I can't help but be offended every time I hear Cinco de Drinco or some excuse or some event or holiday for students to go out drinking. And I'm not saying that we need to stop it, and I'm not I'm saying it's possible to stop it, but how do we move as a community <coughs> forward in order to educate everyone without having them forget about it within a few weeks or months. Um, that's the main concern that I have because maybe this was the one that blew up and decided to get everybody's attention. How long will it be before another one comes up and gets everybody's attention again? How many more people will be offended until another incident like this is brought up at, at this level? So those are what my concerns are and those are the concerns I have seen ever since I was a freshman here. So thank you. My name is Jody Lisberger. I'm a visiting professor uh, in women's and gender studies. And I wanted to add to the comment of the gentleman who spoke a few times ago to say, this is a, a, a huge insult to Native peoples, to people of color. But I wanted to add that it's an insult to all of us. It is an, it is an insult to all men, to all women who uphold certain dignities about human life. And so not to diminish the immense insult to Native peoples or people of color, but it's an insult to all of us. It's an affront. It's, it's an atrocity in its way. And I think for me one of the big issues is this idea of the path of least resistance. That there were how many people at that party, and not one of them, not one of them had a thought that maybe this wasn't so cool that they didn't have the courage or the ability or they didn't know how to actually say, you know what, this isn't okay. <laughs> so I would think that one of the things that we all need to do, though it's very difficult, is not to be bystanders, not to be willing to see something happening and say nothing, even though it makes us uncomfortable. Thank you. My name is Sarah Taniyama. Um, I'm here as a representative from the Psychology Master's program. This is a topic that we have discussed in our small cohort, but it is something that continues to be a discussion, is cultural competency. You know, we talk about how our community, how Cal Poly can increase its cultural competency, and that's all great, but it's an individual mission as well. Each one of our students needs to take it upon themselves to increase their own cultural competency. And like the woman before me said, say things are wrong. You know, in the psychology world, there's something called bystander effect. 
It's when you stand by and wait because you're waiting for somebody else to say something, somebody else to do something. And it's learning that self-motivation, learning the self-discipline to say it yourself, to do it yourself. So yes, somebody in that fraternity, somebody attending that party, probably at some point, excuse me, at some point said, maybe this isn't the best theme, maybe this isn't the best idea. But did anyone say anything? Maybe not. And that's where the problem lies. It's in the college community. You're all adults now. You know, we, we are all adults and need to take personal responsibility for the decisions that we make and the actions that we take. And yes, Cal Poly should instill some kind of class or some kind of program that helps cultural competency. But ultimately, it lies within each one of you. And you're here, obviously, because you care. And so it's an individual battle to increase your own cultural competency. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jose Navarro, and I'm an assistant professor in the English department. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually here and going to say something on behalf of one of my young women students. Um, this is important because this last weekend's incident is not just about race. It's not just about Native peoples. It's about race, but it's also about gender, and it's also about calling women hoes, and that means it's also about a kind of rape culture that gets perpetuated with these bros and hoes parties. From what I hear from my students, from what I hear from my students, is that these parties, these bros and hoes themed parties are pervasive. They happen all the time under different guises, whether it's CEOs and office hoes, or, or in this particular case, colonial bros and whatnot. They happen over and over and over again. So she sent me a message because she's afraid to come here and speak for herself. And she asked me to say something about this. So that's what I want to do here today. I want to say that I'm, not only am I speaking as a professor whose student has asked me to do this, I'm also speaking as a parent, as a parent. So what we do in construct these parties and continue to call women hoes and continue to invite them to these parties is to objectify women, to say that it's okay to call them hoes, and of course by extension whore and prostitute. Date rape is a very real problem on college campuses across the country. Rape is not a happy, fun theme. It's not something to party about. Young women participating in these parties, I'm sorry to say, but you become complicit in this. Young men, you need to take the lead here and stop calling women hoes, okay? At some point, all of the parents, all of the faculty on campus, if you have children, this has to be a concern for you too. If you don't say anything, if you don't speak up because this is an issue of racism, you need to speak up because this is an issue of sexism and an issue of a real violence that happens as a result of these parties that is rape. You need to say something because you care about your students who come here. Thank you. My name is Sandy Clement. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biological Sciences, and I have a terrible fear of public speaking, so please forgive me if my voice shakes and I stumble in my speech. Um, I was thinking, first of all, I want to say that I found the events offensive as a member of this community, and when Erin Eccles asked the faculty to stand up if we could be a resource, Initially, I did not because I am not a person of color and as a, as a member of the dominant group, I don't know what it's like to experience these microaggressions. And then I wrote down in my notes, remember, you're trying to be an ally. And so I'm up here even though I am shaky and terrified right now, but as, in trying to be an ally, um, I'm trying to think what I can do using my position as an assistant professor, what ability I might have that the students here do not. And I want to address the question of how we can move forward. 
how can we not have these events repeating themselves? I've only been here a little over two years, and so I wasn't here for the crops incident. Um, and student body is only here for a few years. You graduate in four years, right? Maybe five, maybe six. We'll keep that to ourselves. Um, so as somebody who hopes to be here for a long time, I would talk, I would want to encourage other faculty out there, other relatively more permanent members of the community who might be even as uncomfortable as I am right now to have these conversations with your students in class, even if you, like me, teach outside of women's and gender studies and ethnic studies, even if you're teaching economics, biochemistry, physics, engineering, because it is relevant to your topics, it is relevant to the careers of your students, and it's okay to talk about how uncomfortable it is, because it's important and we need to have these conversations. Thanks. Hello everyone, my name is Yaneli, um, and I am an English and theater major here at Cal Poly. I wasn't planning to speak, but <laughs> decided to come up here. Um, this particular event uh, affects me both as a woman and as a person of color. Um, as a person of color, I come from San Jose, which is a very wide diversity. Woo, San Jose, <laughs> represent. Um, and I remember my first day here at Cal Poly for orientation, and I cannot describe the feeling of, for the very first time in my life, being in a group of people um, surrounded, looking around, and not seeing a single familiar face, and feeling a true sense of fear. Never something I had experienced before in my life. Um, and as a woman, just the idea of being on this campus, having such things going on, being afraid that if I go to one of these events, if I go downtown not being supported by my fellow students, if I get raped, if I become assaulted, not being able to go out and seek help. It is an issue of fear. It is an issue of community. As a student in this campus, I don't want to be here pursuing an education under the threat of fear. Um, so please, just uh, as, a, as a community, take this as an opportunity to open your arms, to, to come here, to get educated, to not silence people like me who <laughs> I'm terrified standing in front of you. Um, and I'm tired of having to speak out for myself as a woman of color and just please extend a hand. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure I, if you could not record me, actually. I don't know who you are particularly, but um, my name is Ana Ibarra, and I'm a member of the uh, LGBTQIA Faculty Staff Association. Last year, I was a member.